My name is Carlette Palmer. I suffer from post-traumatic stress disorder after I was brutally attacked when I was 15. Seven years ago, 22-year-old Carlette was attacked by two women on her way home from school. After the attack happened, um, Carlette's personality did change drastically. The hardest thing to see was your confident, happy, go-lucky child turn into this girl that won't even walk the streets locally. Carlette could no longer live in the town and had to move away with her mum. Even today, seven years after the attack, she will not walk around this town on her own. In a small town, when a big thing happens, everybody knows about it. And I the attention that it brings to her, negative or positive, people feeling sorry for her is not something she wants. Carlette and her mum constantly relive the night of the attack. And this is where the attack occurred, just here. Um, I'd driven past and gone up to the back, so I had to come all the way back round, and that's where she was lying. I actually drove past the attack when it was happening and didn't realise it was my daughter. And so I failed her. I failed her when it was happening. I failed in the way I reacted, and I failed because I couldn't make it better. So that, that, that's hard to deal with on a personal level. I mean, the amount of times people have said, oh, just get over it. Other people get attacked. Other pe And the amount of people that have said that to it. But it's not, I'm not saying her attack was worse than anyone else's. And on a scale, it probably wasn't. But it's how it affected her. That's the issue. It's not how it, it's not what happened. That's not the issue with her. It's how it affected her. Carlette has found ways to deal with her anxiety. What I do as coping um, is picking holes in my skin. I do it continuously and have done for a long time. As you can see, some scars are quite old and they used to be a lot darker. Um, but I've tried all sorts to try and stop doing it, but it it's soothing um, and it kind of calms me. I mean, the worst part is which is here. I'm her big sister, I, I'm just gonna tell her, don't do that. So I don't really know how to handle that she's scar she scarred herself enough that she now won't let people see her legs and arms and things, so how, or why she does that, I have no idea, to be honest. Carlette's image has become an obsession. My hair and my makeup is my facade, so it is my mask. I wouldn't leave or can't leave the house without a full face of makeup and hair done. She won't even get in the car without makeup. This is how bad it is. If I said to her, oh, I don't want to drive in town, can you drop? No, I ain't got no makeup on. You're staying in the car, what's that about? She will spend hours getting ready on a face that's already, as far as I'm concerned, perfect. The anxiety is the massive thing, I think, that's just telling herself that she is good enough to do whatever it is that she's doing. If she hasn't got any makeup on, she sees an ugly girl, a scarred girl, and it, her scars aren't that bad. The scars she sees on her face represent the scars that she feels inside. Carlette has been dancing from the age of four. At the time of the assault, she was studying at a stage school and wanted a career TV presenting, but her confidence has been shattered. It sort of feels like it's, it's taken my career path away from me and I've had to reanalyze myself and what I feel I can and I'm not capable of anymore. It's actually quite disappointing that it still affects her in a way. Not disappointed with her, but disappointing in the person that you thought that she would be. I've always had an interest in presenting. Um, I would love to pursue it, um, but it's another way of being judged in my eyes.
you'd expect to maybe not be in the limelight but to be within the industry and every time she's had an audition or the possibility of an audition she tells her she's not good enough it doesn't matter how many times we tell her she doesn't believe you and that can be frustrating understanding Carlette's self-consciousness is difficult for her family especially her sister so how would you be feeling if we were standing in town rather than in a field in Hawley um, like everybody's staring at me you think everybody would be staring at you um, what do you think that they would be staring at? Um, me. For what purpose? Like, what do you think they're judging thinking? Judging me, I suppose. In, judging you on what? I like the way I look, or how I'm acting, or just me as a person. I, I think Carlette is still definitely trapped as a 15-year-old victim. She'd hate me take telling you that, but yeah, she's definitely trapped at that. I feel like I'm stuck in the past. I uh, can't really see a way out, and I would love for the Speakmans to help. I, I want her to be a normal, happy adult. That's all I want. Just make her happy. I just want her to be happy. If nothing changes, then I'm going to be an unhappy person for pretty much the rest of my life, I suppose. Twenty-two-year-old Carlette has spent seven years living in the shadow of a brutal attack. I feel like it's completely ruined my life. Her confidence is in pieces. After the attack happened, um, Carlette's personality did change drastically. Can Nick and Eva really help her get her life back? So, uh, Anne-Marie, can I ask you, what was Carlette like as a little girl? She was a performer. She loved to dance. Um, ever since she was could pose in front of a camera, she would pose. I mean, having older sisters, it would dress her up and turn her into a mini little doll, <laughs> you know. Um, I've got pictures of them making her pose and, and things. Um, she started classical ballet at four, um, which she excelled at. So she, she is an amazing performer, you know. I mean, I know she, I'm her mum, but when you see her on stage... You... So she's obviously very confident then? Um, well, she used to be. So, I'll, can I turn that to you now, Carl? So I'm hearing that you're a confident little girl who loved to dance and perform and liked everybody to sort of enjoy your dancing, etc., and your performing. What changed? Um, it sort of changed. I started getting a lot less confident when um, I was sort of attacked. Can you tell us about that, please? Yeah. Um, there was... It was just started off as just school ground girls, like, arguing, all girls my age, and... One of my best friends at the time didn't like my new friend and sort of gave her a lot of grief and it turned into a very big argument in town. And then I asked my mum to come pick me up from, oh. fr from the train station. And as I was standing there, a car pulled up. Um, two women jumped out. The older sister of one of them started hitting me first. And hitting you where? Um, my face. When you said they were hitting you, were they hitting, slapping, punching? Uh, one was punching my face, started, and then the other one started near my ribs, and one was started smacking my head off the brick wall, um, and they didn't really stop. They ripped my hair from... Well, I had hair piece in, ripped it from my scalp, um, and they just continuously, continuously kept near me and punching me and smacking my head. Um, which originally ended up doing my cheekbone. Um, my when you said doing your cheekbone, what, they broke your cheekbone? No, just fractures okay. in my cheekbone um, and my ribs um, and obviously a lot of bruising on my, on my head and things. So can I ask you, Mum, how do you feel listening to that? How does that make you feel? Guilt. That, that's the only emotion I can feel is guilt and ang anger, obviously. Anger, that's okay. my baby. You know, it's your baby that you're supposed to protect. You're not allowed to allow things like that to happen to your children, I, you know. I, I totally understand. Carla, how did, did you know that your mum felt guilty? Um, 
year afterwards, she's, she's, yeah, she's meant to. I mean, she's, she's obviously quite yeah. visibly not let go of that guilt, yeah. even now. How long ago was this? About seven years ago. Now. So s seven years on, mm -hmm. you can see just, if you look at your mum, she's still not let go of that guilt. How does that make you feel? Um, comfortable. Did you not realise how, how guilty I felt? Y yeah, I did realise you felt guilty, but... Okay, so now you know why she feels guilty. Yeah. How, how does that make you feel? Tell you, Mum. Sad. Do you think I could have stopped it? No. But I do. I think I could have stopped it. I think I could have prevented it. So how has this incident changed your lives? <sighs> well, we've left Hawley. Um, um, we separated the family, basically. Um, at the time, circumstances was um, my husband wouldn't leave the town. Carlette couldn't walk. Well, she still can't walk the streets of Hawley on her own now. Um, and obviously, your husband's your husband, but your children are your children, you know? And yes, I do. I'm sorry, my children take priority over anyone. Um, so, yeah, they, it kind of instigated a split down so the family. So you're saying that you left your husband? Yeah, yeah, we moved out. And how we did moved. that make you feel, Carla? Um, responsible. Have you ever told your mum that? Now's the time. Look at me like that. You're not responsible for us leaving. And Marie, mm -hmm. would you tell Carla what your main worries are for her right now? That you're not going to be happy. And until you can deal with your demons, you can't even, Carla, you can't even walk to the shop without having to put your makeup on. That just been since the attack that you feel you have to put a full face of makeup on. Yeah, because I've um, done some damage to my skin, so I don't really like people seeing it. So, what kind <coughs> of damage have they done to your skin? Um, uh, I. Okay. It's like so ones like this. I, I pick and dig my nails in until. Because that's bruising, isn't it? It's scarring. Like, it's like that, and they're sort of. And that was from the attack? That's me, that's me doing that. Since the attack. It's like a form of self-harming. Yeah, it's just... Do you know that it's a form of self-harm? Is that how you see it? Well, yeah, well, I've been told. So what's okay. your version and, and of when it? your mum said that, you looked at her in a quite, quite an indignant manner then, really. So why would you do that? I don't, I don't know, I get really defensive with my mother. It's because we, co we deal with things differently. I will. I know. You talk, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. So what was that? You talk, <coughs> I don't. Yeah. I will discuss she, things. She, she brings it up at times when un unnecessary times, or she'll mention one of the names, or, or, or just. And it, it relives it for me. So as soon as a name within any of, any of them, is brought up, I won't sleep that night because I can remember the attack distinctively from every point that happened. It just seems to me that all roads <coughs> lead back to this attack, don't they? Everything, Everything that you're doing. I know. And I've got to say, Amory, I really feel for you. I do because, you know, like you said, your children are the most precious thing and yes. I can't even begin to imagine. No, I can't. You know. but, but you know what, obviously, you're talking about your family. Uh, Naomi's here today and mm -hmm. we'd like to hear how this whole thing has, atta <laughs> has uh, affected her too. Well, it's affected the whole dynamics of, of not just mine and Carlette's relationship. Sure. I mean, Naomi being the elder sibling of girl, um, she's 15 years older, so she's <coughs> always been like a surrogate mum, if, okay, because well, I work nights as well. Yeah. So well, let's invite that's, Naomi that's in and see yeah. what she has to say okay. about the situation. I do feel a bit apprehensive about telling Carla how we, we all really feel, but I haven't got any expectations, to be honest. I'm just going to see what happens. 
Hi, Naomi. Thank Hi. you Hi, for Naomi. joining us. It's lovely to meet you. Nice to meet you. Um, we've just been listening uh, to your mum and Carla sort of telling us a little bit about what's, well, a lot about what's been going on. And we'd like to hear your version of what's changed since the day that Carla got attacked. What's changed in Carla? Um, she's... She's gone from um, a bubbly, confident young um, teenager to literally thinking of any kind of reason to not go out somewhere unless she's surrounded by a certain circle of people that she's secure with. So she thinks she's not good enough for whatever career she thought she was going to have. She's not good enough for to, to relationships even. She'll think of reasons why relationships won't continue. And, uh, but prior to the attack, none of this. Ever no, no, she was no, she was just you know happy go lucky sort of child. It's just it's just it's just serious insecurities about everything to her looks to her look. how she thinks. She's she what's thinks changed she's, in in how she sort of appears. The makeup's got more and more um, to the extent that she won't go anywhere unless she looks perfect. She won't even face my toddler without having makeup on. <laughs> Um, that sort of thing, so, and that's, she's two. She doesn't care what her auntie Letty looks like. <laughs> Have true. you ever told her this before? Have you? Yeah, I've told her, <coughs> but uh, the way that we talk to each other generally is more, don't be daft, mm -hmm. do you know what I mean? Never deep and mean of fools or anything. We don't do emotion too well. No. So that the healing process can begin, the family need to open up to each other. Okay. They've written down how they feel. Paulette, this letter is to let you know how proud I am of you for still fighting. Even though inside you may feel like giving up to your emotions and worries, you still keep trying. From my point of view though, what you went through and how we all dealt with it has caused me to worry for you, but also for my guilt on my part for not actually punching hell out of them. <laughs> Um, for you, you know, being the big sister should, you know. We'll get revenge by you becoming the person you were always meant to be, and they will always be the people who did wrong. Um, after this, I want you to walk anywhere that you want to go with pride and with courage. Okay. How did that make you feel, Carla? Um... Oh, this is still very emotional. Sorry, just... <laughs> I'll give. I'll, 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 can I give her a cuddle? I'll, <laughs> I'll give her a cuddle. Really you can. <laughs> of course you can. She's just allowed to have a cuddle. <laughs> today. Just today. <laughs> they don't normally hug. <laughs> they don't do hug like that. Well, these two don't. Um, do you know what, what I see here? I see a family that, um, that just have absolute unconditional love for each other. And it's just so sad that you've all been so broken and hurt by this and that the love that, that, that do you know, I agree, the love Absolutely. that there is between you three is just... Amazing. It, it's phenomenal, it really is. And yet, you know, you you don't want to hug, you don't want to look. Mum's there beating herself <laughs> up about it all. So, Mum... Can we, uh, have my letter. can we have your letter, please? Oh, darling number three, daughter, I need you to know, firstly, how beautiful and amazing we all think you are. You have so much to give, and I'm not just meaning your singing and your dancing, but just as a person. You have a big heart with so much to give. You need to believe in you as much as we do. From the day you were born, You've been a gift, and you know you're a gift, and a joy bringing smiles and laughter into our lives. I find it hard to understand why you don't see what we all see. You don't need to hide behind makeup or the fake smiles you put on. Let the gold inside shine through. If I had a magic wand, I would have waved away all your pain and make that day never have happened. Above all, all else, remember, whatever happens in your life, I am your cushion, your pillow, 
your support and your mother forever. And I love you. <laughs> now hug mum. <laughs> Give your mum a cuddle. I think <laughs> Thanks for that, Mum. <laughs> Carl, actually, on your turn, please. Dear family, even though we have our arguments, I wouldn't change any of you. The world. <laughs> um, Mum. <laughs> um, I know I react to you quickly, but the things you say sometimes trigger my insecurities. Um, Anger. Um, we just deal things and deal with things in different ways. We depend on each other a lot. Um, we are friends. <laughs> um, we just know how to wind each other up. <laughs> yeah. Um, lots of love. We love you. Thank you all so much Thank for being so open. And like I said earlier, you can really feel the love between you. And I'm so pleased Amazing. that you've all been so open because that's the start. That's the start of realising that the foundations you've got here are just so strong and they're there for you. And likewise, and that's, that's great. It's down to us now, so we're going to go and say goodbye. And uh, now's the time to change. What a lovely family, what a sad story, and it needs to end today. They're all suffering. They're all suffering with different elements of this attack, and it really needs to stop today, so we're going to do our very best to, to help her. My sister is not an emotional person and definitely cried, so that was emotional. Um, actually telling them things was hard, because I find it hard to even look at them sometimes, let alone talk about it. Perhaps she's more of an emotional soul than the rest of us in the family. Um, we do seem to have a steely core um, and maybe a little bit of expression will do her a, a world of good. Anxiety has been controlling Carlette since a vicious attack when she was 15. The attack um, has left me feeling emotionally scarred. Um, I wouldn't leave or can't leave the house without a full face of makeup. She's turned to self-harm to block out the pain. During mediation with the Speakmans, the emotion was too much for her. This letter is to let you know how proud I am of you for still fighting. OK, so we brought you outside, Carla, because we know that your life changed outside. Yeah. And that's the thing that you feel most uncomfortable with. But it's a really beautiful day and today's a new beginning. And that's why we thought, you know what, we're gonna do something different and, and bring you outside to help to get you over this problem once and for all. So Carla, I need you to close your eyes and with your eyes closed all the way through, just talk through what happened that day from start to finish and then let us know how you feel. Okay. Um... So it started with an argument in town. I called my mum to come get me. I walked and stood in the light so that she could see me. And the car pulled up. Uh, two females got out. And they started to hit my face. And then my ribs and then my head was being smacked off the wall whilst I was being kneed and punched. Just so I know how bad it is on a scale yeah. of 0 to 10, 10 being I can't cope with talking about this anymore and 0 being I'm okay to talk about this, Nick. Where are you? About 7-ish. Okay. She took one more punch to my face and got in the car. They drove off, um, my mum pulled up in the same manner. I felt like I was going to die at that point. I thought they'd come back for me. You're still eight, seven, eight out of ten now? A um, bit higher. Yeah, okay. That, yeah. Where are we now? About nine. Okay. okay. Mum realised my injuries, I got taken to hospital. 
And then, yeah. Keep your eyes closed. Have you been to a hospital before? Uh, not for anything major. Okay, so how did that make you feel going to an accident and emergency? Horrible. Horrible. Where are you now on a scale of 0 to 10? Uh, 9 to 10. 9 to 10. Okay. And where's, when you feel these bad feelings, because you told us before that you don't sleep anymore. Yeah. You don't sleep at night because something will trigger you off during the day and it preys on your mind and then you can't go to sleep. Yeah. Where do these feelings start? Where do they come from? Are they in your chest, in your stomach? Where do they start from? It's quite, quite low. It starts here and then it, it works its way up to my head. It feels, it's my head feels full. So do you start feeling anxious or do you start feeling angry? A, a mixture. A mixture of angry and anxious. And since this happened seven years ago, yeah. have these feelings got worse or better? It's got worse. It's got worse? Yeah. OK. Okay. Okay, okay that's fine. Thank you okay, very much. OK, thank you. You can open, open your eyes. eyes. So, okay. let me ask you a question. Obviously, we, we know that you don't feel great about yourself. Um, and hence you try and hide yourself. With, you've got various tools that you use to hide yourself, including makeup and things that you mentioned. Yeah. So when you do look in the mirror, so you've got, you've got no makeup on and it's, it's Carla, mm. and Carla is looking in the mirror. When, when you look in the mirror, can you tell me, what do you see? How would you describe the person that you see in the mirror? I see uh, scars. Um, I, I can't. I can't really see past that. I see. And what do those scars mean to you? It, it's just makes me feel like a, like weak. Okay. Like it's made me some sort of weak person. And what if you were going to describe the girl that was looking back at you? So I've never met the girl that's in the mirror. Can you describe what she looks like? She's okay, but you can see the faults. What does okay mean? She's all right. She's not, nothing special. And you she's said, nothing special? Yeah. She's nothing special and you see the faults. What are the faults? Um, afraid to be herself, I suppose. What about visually? What are the faults? The scars. And they, those and they're scars. On your they're on your face? Yeah, they're like these ones on my arms. So those scars are a result of the attack? It's what I've done. On your face is what you've done as well? Yeah. So, from the attack, what scars were you left with? More emotional. Scarring. No. Oh, no, on your face. What scars were you left on your face? It's, I don't know if other people can see it, but this eye from my last hit, to me, every time I look at it, looks completely different to how it used to be. Don't think anybody else can see it, and I don't know if it's in my imagination, but okay. it's, it seems to me like it's dropped. So let me just ask you, you just said to me then, I don't know if it's in my imagination. You see, when people say that to me usually, guess what? Yeah. Guess what? It might be. Sorry? It might be. <laughs> Do you know what? I can't say it usually is because <laughs> it always is. Yeah. So basically, you imagine something that's not there. And, you, and, that's, what, and you're the, that's why you're the only one that sees it because no matter how many people you tell, and no matter how much they scrutinise you, you can't find it. Yeah. How does that make you feel? Silly. <laughs> okay. Do you know what? I'm glad. That's a good start. <laughs> you saying silly then and laughing is great. Because that tells me that you're changing already. Yes. Most definitely. What, what I'm struggling with a little bit here, just to think about that, is that. I know you talked about these, these two women, and they were women because they were considerably older than you. Yeah. That they attack you. 
but this attack was seven years ago. Yeah. So, have you, so over the last seven years, have you, have you been inviting them back into your life to carry on attacking you, picking you, on your face and on your arms and on your legs? Have they been doing that? No. Sorry? No. Okay, so... So who's been attacking you for the last seven years? Me. Sorry? Me. What does that make you? I don't know. Is it ever right to hurt anyone? No. What those girls did to you, incredibly wrong. A horrible thing to do, it should never have happened. But they did that one day. It might have lasted 10 minutes, I don't know. But were they stopped, you carried on for seven years. Who's done the most damage? Me, visibly. Did you deserve to get beaten up? No, I, I, I don't know. Did you get? Did you deserve to get hurt? No. Did you get? Did you deserve to be um, hurt by two people who were considerably older and bigger than you? No. And was it wrong what they did? Yeah. And is it wrong what you're doing? Yeah. You see, one thing for sure, they've moved on with their lives. Mm. I don't know who they are, I don't know what they're doing now. They might be beating someone else up, I don't know, but they've moved on with their lives. You've not moved on with yours. Mm. Even actually before what you looked, what you, what you saw when you looked in the mirror. And you said, that the person you see is someone who has scars, who's weak, not great, nothing special, with dark brown marks and scars, one eye smaller than the other. What that tells us, Carla, is that when you look in the mirror, you don't see what we see. What you see is that. No. That's what you're still seeing. <laughs> Sorry. But it's true, isn't it? Yeah, I wasn't that's... expecting to see that. Sorry. <laughs> but that's... that's why you've not moved on. You've trapped yourself in that. Everybody else has moved on. Everybody else has moved on. <sighs> they're all getting on with their own life. They don't even think about you because they're just too busy doing their own thing. Is it time to let this go? Yeah, it's horrible. Do you know what? You've got to let her go because you're not letting her get better. <coughs> you're carrying on attacking yourself, picking yourself every day. Because you're carrying on where those girls left off. And that makes you worse than them. They did it once. You've done it every day for seven years. Okay. I want you to see. I want you to see what we see and what your family sees and what everyone else sees. Because do you know what? By comparison. We don't see that. Should I show you what we see? That's what we see. And should I tell you what the difference is? Let me show you what the difference is. That's the victim, that's the survivor. And it's your choice. You can be a victim, or you can choose to be a survivor. You see, if you choose to be a survivor, and you stop being a victim, it's gone. That's your choice. Which one is it? Ugh. So before, Carla, I asked you to close your eyes and talk us through the attack. Yeah. What I'd like you to do 
Now is just close your eyes and just see it again in your mind's eye and tell me how it feels. Okay. Um, do you know that you're smiling? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, doesn't, okay, I suppose. Don't feel. I can see you look confused. Yeah. Because obviously you're smiling. When we asked you last time, you started to cry, but this time you're smiling. Think about when, close your eyes for me again, and think about the moment when your mum pulled up. <laughs> okay, I... Anything? I, <laughs> I think it's safe to say that <laughs> actually she's over it. <laughs> that for, you know. It took seven years, but she's moved on. I think you've moved on. Do you know you've moved on? I think so. Yeah. <laughs> Thank Can you. you tell the difference? <laughs> yeah. Obviously, today's a new day. Yep. You feel that. Yeah. Today's the start of new things and you've been held back for the last seven years. Yep. So we thought... Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> so we thought with the fact that today is a new start, yep. that... We want to help your dreams come true because if anybody deserves dreams come true, it's you. So That's we've right. organised for you, and we're coming with you. You're going to have some presentation training now, and then no way you are presenting the weather. <laughs> <laughs> How does that sound? Great. What, do you, do you, and your mum and sister know nothing about it. Not? They okay. know nothing. They're just going to see you pop up on a TV screen. How much fun is Reading that going to be? Oh my gosh. Thank you. Does that sound like a good idea? Yeah. <laughs> when someone changes, there's always a visual change in the face. And sometimes it's, it's a very small change. With Carla, it was massive. Anyone could see it. It was so massive, we knew that it had gone. And then all it took from there was for it to slowly sink in that actually this really has gone because I, I feel different. And the more she felt different, the more confidence she got. And the more confidence she got, we knew that do you know what? She's going to be presenting the weather later on today. She'll nail it. Coming up after the break, Carlette attempts to take a giant step forward. Three, two, one. Hello again. We haven't quite said goodbye to the sunshine just yet. <laughs> and make her family proud. I love you too. Carlette has spent seven years stuck in the past after she suffered a brutal beating. During treatment, the Speakmans helped her look at her attack in a totally different way. When you look in the mirror, you don't see what we see. What you see is that. Yeah. But now she must put her newfound confidence into action. 
She's come to Media City in Salford, where a huge challenge awaits her. She's about to fulfil her dream of becoming a TV presenter. Yeah. So do you fancy it? Do you fancy a go? Yeah. Well, this is where we do all the shots and okay. all the pre-weather um, stuff. Yeah. And then over here, where we're going to take you now, is where we do the actual thing in front of the camera. So Fabulous. Follow me. They're going to give us some tips, Kerry, and sort of show well, of course, us yeah. how it's done. Local weather presenter Kerry Gosney is here to show her the ropes. It's not scary. It's just a, it's just a green curtain. <laughs> And um, normally, on a normal day, you don't get any cameras, you just get a static camera with no cameraman. So you're actually really? in the so you're on, on your, your own. own. I really didn't expect you to be in this room on your own. Mm. And then, so you're, you decide when you're going to start and when you're going to finish and you just... <laughs> Talks me, Rob will talk me through it in my ear, so I've obviously got an earpiece in. Carlette's family yeah, are waiting for her outside, but have no idea what she'll be doing. Um, Unless they've... Swapped her for another Carlet. I can't okay, think I of can't, what the treatment is for the life of me. I have no idea. She's either gone in the corner going, nope, nope. Yeah, we have no. thought that she's been doing that. Or she's gone, I don't know. I can't imagine her of responding, let alone anything else. I actually can't. Can't wait to find out. Yeah. <sighs> After a couple of rehearsals, yeah, it's Carlette's big moment. Five seconds, four. Three, two, one. Hello again. We haven't quite said goodbye to the sunshine just yet. Plenty more on the way this weekend. There'll be a few outbreaks of rain this evening though, with lows of 7 or 8 Celsius. The clouds will continue to build, pushing southwards overnight. Tomorrow is a cloudy day with some rain to begin with, but the afternoon will be drier in most places. As far as I'm concerned, the future is looking very bright. Amazing. Amazing. Oh, so that's nice. gotta feel amazing. It does, it does feel yeah. great. It does, it does feel good. Yeah, yeah you were like amazing. You got interested. Outside, her mum and sister are about to get the surprise of their lives. We haven't quite said goodbye to the sunshine just yet. Plenty of on the way this weekend. So there'll be a few outbreaks of rain this evening, though. Tomorrow is a cloudier day with some rain to begin, but the afternoon will be drier in most places. As far as I'm concerned, the future is looking very bright. Oh my goodness! Feel good? Yeah. Felt good doing it. Yeah. Yeah. She's amazing. She's amazing. Oh, we need to see that again, like though. I want to see come around here, come around here. Come on, come on. Move over. So, do you remember that only this morning she had a problem looking you in the face? Do you remember? <laughs> <laughs> I love you too. Take it off, take it off. Take it off. Take it off. Do it. Come on. Awkward. Yay! There you go. It's still beautiful, see? Can you see? Gorgeous. <laughs> this morning, a very fragile young woman came to see us. This afternoon, we've got the old Carlette back, but with extra confidence. And you know, she's just got now everything to live for. They are one happy family. And the real moment for me was then when Carlette, her eyelash started coming off. And instead of trying to stick it back on, you know what she said? Pull them off and pull them off because she'd been hiding behind them ever since the attack. And that was like, for me, that was, this is over, I'm moving on. My sister has just come out um, and she has not only given us the weather on a big screen and performed it with perfection, um, she's come out with no negativity about herself. But I've questioned her as well, I've even sat her down, I've asked about the attack and everything, and she's just like, no, that's that, that's done, that's finished. If I ever do see the two women that did attack me, it wouldn't bother me, and I'd be quite happy to shake their hand and move on. It, it's excitement, it's wonderful, it's, they're lovely. I've got so much gratitude, it's, it's untrue, genuine gratitude. Today is the start of a new me and a new life. <laughs>